It's just after sunset at a small grade crossing in Warren, California. A southbound UP intermodal train quietly makes its way down the last stretch of Tehachapi Pass. Not much, if any, throttle is needed here as the train is descending a 2.3% grade. In the distance lies the town of Mojave, which marks the end of Tehachapi Pass. Tehachapi Pass is located on the north end of Union Pacific's Mojave subdivision and stretches between Mojave and Bakersfield. Starting in Mojave, the tracks run uphill about 18 miles toward Summit, which marks the beginning of the 3600 foot descent to Bakersfield. From Summit, the tracks run 48 miles to Bakersfield, and along the way will pass many interesting features the most notable one being Tehachapi Loop. We'll get to that later. A good morning shot on the pass is located at Monolith, where you can capture trains on a sweeping curve with the Lehigh Southwest Cement Company in the background. Cement production began here in 1908 for the construction of the first LA aqueduct and it continued until the aqueduct was completed in 1914. In the early 1920s, the plant was reopened as Monolith Portland Cement Company has been producing cement ever since, albeit with a change of ownership in the 80s. After clearing Summit, the southbound UP was wasting no time making its way downhill. Moving down the line is Golden Hills, located right on the outskirts of Tehachapi. A short drive down a dirt road leads to a nice view of trains going around an S-curve. Here an eastbound BNSF rounds the curve as it climbs out of cable.
BNSF trains are a very common sight on Tatchby Pass, as BNSF shares trackage rights with UP over the pass between Mojave and Bakersfield. This leads to the large variety and volume of trains the pass is known for. With tall hills sitting right next to the main line, Warren offers great elevated shots of trains. Shortly after arriving here, an eastbound BNSF intermodal train came by, making its way down the grade. Less than a minute later, and here came a westbound BNSF intermodal train. Getting to and leaving this particular spot was, uh... Oh my goodness. <laughs> to say the least, not the easiest thing to do. I would only recommend going to this spot if you had an off-road capable vehicle, or if you are willing to hike there. After lunch in Tehachapi, my friend knows the train had a signal at Summit. So we headed over to the Monolith, and after a short wait, a southbound UP manifest showed up.
Going back to Warren later in the day yielded a northbound UP intermodal train. Where the first hill was excellent for eastbounds, this other hill was great for westbounds. This spot is easier to access as a gravel road leads here for the windmill, which is the noise you can hear in the background. Since me and my friend hadn't caught anything at Tehachapi Loop all day, we decided to beat this train to it. Constructed by Southern Pacific in the mid-1870s, Tatchby Loop was built for trains to maintain a steady and manageable grade while climbing and descending the pass. At almost three quarters of a mile long, the loop allows trains to gain 77 feet before taking on the rest of the pass. The design was so successful that the loop has remained largely unchanged ever since it was opened on July 10, 1876. A short hike down dirt road at the loop leads to a nice view of the tracks between Waylong and Marcel. Here we will catch two westbound BNSFs making their way downhill.
After heading back over to the loop and waiting for an hour, a southbound UP finally broke the silence with its assault up the grade. At the time of the loop's construction, the district roadmaster for the Southern Pacific was W.A. Long. This is where the name of the siding on the loop, Way Long, got its name from. Not far from the loop is Woodford, the next siding past Waylong. This is a popular spot among rail fans with its easy access off the road and nice elevated view of a curve. This northbound UP manifest will stop being the siding here and with night quickly falling would be our last train of the night. The next morning our first spot was a shot I have always wanted to get, the tunnels at Cable. Here tunnels 14, 15, 16, and 17 are all located within a half mile of each other and provide an amazing sight as trains sink through all four tunnels at once.
Following the tunnels, the southbound UP will pass over a small creek, then the signals at Cable. From here, the tracks will remain a double main line until they pass Mojave, where the BNSF splits off from the UP. Not far behind was another train, an eastbound BNSF. We decided to go ahead and catch them going through the tunnels as well. Later in the afternoon at Caliente, an eastbound BNSF was just pulling out of the siding after meeting a northbound UP intermodel train. We arrived just in time to see the train begin its climb uphill again. 
In the background is where the Bean of Fire had occurred during the first few days of July, which burned 2,900 acres. Thankfully, despite how close it got to Caliente, no homes or other structures were burned down. Heading back to Woodford, I flew my drone over to a bridge at the south end of Woodford siding. This northbound UP manifest will take the siding where it will meet a southbound UP intermodal train. You may have noticed that I have been referring to UP trains as northbound and southbound while referring to BNSF trains as eastbound and westbound. This is because UP timetables refer to trains on the Mojave sub as northbound and southbound while BNSF timetables refer to trains on here as eastbound and westbound. After 15 minutes, the southbound came. Once he passed Woodford, I decided to head over to the loop to film him there as well.
This train will be the last on our trip. If you would like to see my friend's video, you can watch it on his channel, Railvision. I'll post the link to his video in the description. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all next time.